Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to um, this Urban Mitchell virtual client insights event called Your Call. Um, what is this? Well, I guess what's really interesting for us is that how often do you give feedback to businesses only to wonder what they actually do with it? Or how often do you actually take time to complete a survey and then you have to wait weeks to hear the results or even worse? never to see the results of it at all. And that's why we've been thinking hard over the last um, 101 days or so around how can we do things a little bit better? And that's why we've created this virtual event, which we're piloting with you today. So brought to you by Expert Hands Human Touch Productions, please welcome to your call. We want to change the way that we listen to you uh, and take your feedback in a very different way forever. And we aim through this session over the next 45 minutes or so to be 100% transparent with the feedback that you provide both pre this event and also during this event. And most importantly, we want to have a conversation and demonstrate that we're listening to you and showing that what we have done with the results uh, based on your inputs. So thank you to everybody that's uh, completed this survey beforehand and also thank you all for joining the session this morning. Um, we are going to use um, a piece of interactive software called Slido, S-L-I-D-O. So if you could go to your device now, uh, whether it's on your phone or your laptop, and just search for Slido, you'll find the, um, the website. And then if you enter the code, which is going to be on all of the slides as we go through it, which is IM2July, as in Irwin Mitchell, 2nd of July you'll find yourself access to the polls that we're running. My name is David Ward and as the Group Sales and Marketing Director Aaron Mitchell, it is my pleasure to be the host for this event today. Um, we have many, many clients and community partners joined uh, this morning, so thank you again for spending the time with us. And I'm delighted to be joined by a number of colleagues and business partners on a panel that we have. And please allow me to introduce our panel. So I'm going to start with Vicky. Hi, Vicky. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> no problem. We were just testing. Morning, that everyone. Yeah, That's sorry. <laughs> thanks for joining us, Vicky. Vicky's our uh, CEO of our business legal services teams at Irwin Mitchell, but most importantly, brings a passion for delivering incredible client experiences across all of our client audiences. So thanks for joining us this morning, Vicky. Yeah, secondly, secondly, we have Nick. Nick Hay. Morning, Nick. Morning, David. Delighted to be with you this morning. Excellent. So Nick, Nick's actually our research partner. So he's an independent voice and Nick and his team he works for B2B International, who is our research partner, um, head of growth there. And Nick and his team have been working with our own insights team at Urban Mitchell, and they're doing the magic behind the scenes this morning and turning the inputs into insights. So thanks for joining us this morning, Nick. It's a pleasure. Then we move on to Pauline Morning. Hi, Pauline. Hi, everyone. Hi, and Pauline is a, a newbie to Irwin Mitchell, just a, a matter of a couple, couple of months or so with us. And having joined recently brings with her a, a wealth of experience outside of the legal and professional services sector around the delivery of awesome client experiences. So thank you for joining us this morning, Pauline. You're welcome. And then we move on to Kate Rawlings. Morning, Kate. Morning, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Now, Kate is our responsible business manager at Irwin Mitchell and is incredibly passionate about making Irwin Mitchell a leading responsible business. So thanks for joining us, Kate. And Kate is joined by another partner of ours, Vimy Rathur, who is the senior relationship manager at Business in the Community. Hi, Vimy. Hi, good morning, all. So again, a fabulous partner of ours and again, bringing that external perspective. So thanks again. For joining us on the panel and um, hopefully we're going to have some really insightful conversations based on the insight that we've received pre and during this event. We're going to cover um, the session in four sections. First being how are we feeling, then we're going to move on to what do you think about and then we're going to talk about the right here right now changes and then we're going to finish with instant insights. So without further ado let's move on to session one and how we're we all feeling. So could I ask you all to go on to Slido 
as I said, it's just entering SLIDO on your device. And the first question we'd like to pose to you is, how are you feeling today? So whilst we wait for the results um, on that, just as please um, feed those through, Kate and Vimy, I'm really interested to how you guys are feeling right now and also personally, but also in terms of the, the business communities out there. Thanks, David. Um, first of all, I think, how are you feeling is such an important question and one that we've been asking our colleagues at Owen Mitchell repeatedly throughout the 100 days of lockdown that we've we've had so far um, and making sure that we can, have, can identify where we need to offer more support. For me personally, how am I feeling today? Um, hopeful for the future, but also cautious. We're at a real kind of turning point and uh, um, there's lots of opportunities to, to kind of build that better um, but also it's really important that we we do it in the right way. Great thanks Kate and, and Vimy you can start to see the words that um, our clients and community partners are starting to say what what do you make of, of that sentiment there? Yeah I think it echoes um, what a lot of businesses out there are saying and I think everybody's experience of lockdown is different and your own feelings can fluctuate from day to day. So there's days when I feel incredibly thankful to be able to spend extra time with my family and to catch up on hobbies that I don't normally have time to do. But then other days I feel really anxious about the future and over overwhelmed with concern for my elderly mum for example. And I think my experiences are very different to those that are living on their own or with small children or people with no garden, for example. And I think everyone's situation is valid. And I think the most important thing for me to share with everybody, and I think I hear echoed by other businesses, is that it's OK to not be OK. Yeah, it's incredible. And, and especially like the good, especially as I go on holiday tomorrow comment as well. Um, holidays are very different these days as well. So quite a good a good interesting mix. So uh, ahead of the session, we we did poll a, a number of a number of you. Nick, Nick, what was the kind of the feedback that we got in terms of the insight ahead of today's session from our clients? Well, we'll move on to that in a short short while, just on the next slide, David. But just while we're on this uh, emotions piece and and the feelings, I think it's it's really interesting to see because we've been running. Um, for our business colleagues, we've been running a business tracker over the last three months um, and, you know, understanding changes, under, but understanding emotions of how decision makers feel. And not surprisingly, at the beginning of lockdown, there was lots of emotions that people were talking around, especially, you know, concerned, anxious, sad, angry, lots of emotions coming through there. Um, and then as we've gone through lockdown, then more frustration has started to come through. Um, but in the in the last month of uh, our tracker, then we've seen business decision makers being a, a lot more positive in terms of emotions and, and optimistic and confident and have, have been coming through. And, and you know, I, I was expecting maybe a, a bit more negative sentiment in mm. there. It's, it's great to see that positive sentiment. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then uh, on, on, as you say, that the, the, the kind of insight in terms of what was the kind of the, the summary of what our clients were telling us ahead of the session? The challenge, so, maybe uh, if we can move on to the, the first slide of the deck and I can I can talk yeah. you through that. So I'll be coming up now. I mean, what, uh, of course, pre-event, we we asked various different questions. Um, some of us coming to, to this event from different backgrounds, you know, from uh, from a personal side of things, but also from a work related uh, point of view. But what we did see is these these four different themes coming through that actually uh, were very fitting to, to, you know, whether it was personal related or, or, or work related. The number one uh, issue uh, or challenge that people were facing uh, that was mentioned was around managing uncertainty and change. And, and specific to that, I mean, it's, it's not surprising, you know, on a personal side of things, people were talking about, well, you know, how do I keep up with advice and regulations that the government's feeding through to us or the challenge of working from home, balancing that, the, the, the homeschooling, especially as trying to do the day job and just keeping motivated and, and productive. Whereas on the work related 
uh, business side, then it was just keeping up with government advice, but more around, you know, PPE, furlough, job retention, back to work, what they need to do there. Uh, and especially around, you know, staffing and, and responsibility of supporting staff while uh, trying to ensure survival in terms of the business. Nick, can I can I just sorry, can I just put in there just on that first one? Absolutely. Sort of working with business clients, I'd, I'd echo that massively because I think what we saw and it was overnight was the the aspiration and the growth and the future looking aspects of all of our client strategies just stop, and it became about survival and what does this mean? Focus on my people. Let's make sure everyone's okay and let's get us all mobilise and that was such a huge change in 24 hours which I don't think certainly businesses and definitely not people have ever experienced we saw that absolutely live happening and I'm, you're going to come on to it but that that emergence out is looking really positive definitely mm. on Thursday which I'm sure we'll talk about but I could absolutely support that in terms of our own conversation yeah and and of course all these four challenges that we've uh, we've listed here are, are interrelated anyway so as you know in the first instance like you say this uncertainty this this kicking into survival mode um but then very closely tied with that this managing the mental health and, and well-being of, uh, of of individuals because uh, i think Vimy, you mentioned you know your uh, your mother you know trying to look after her feeling isolated and lonely so concerns for others has definitely been a, a problem you know whether there's been personal illnesses through covid-19 but also you know in terms of just how can i support others that might be elderly disabled shielding uh, and this fear of you know, going outside or can I go and exercise on the work related uh, side of things. But, you know, those 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 worries transcend uh, into the workplace. So, you know, supporting staff that have either been furloughed uh, or, or trying to deal with furlough in a sensitive and, and careful manner. And while all the while, you know, employees because of the furlough scheme, those employees that have still carried on working, they've uh, they've had to do more work. And so just being able to help them during this time not only where it's remote working is the norm but also just to uh, to be able to to therefore you know be able to to help them with the the increased workload and nick i think on that as well as a working mum married to a working dad just being a teacher that, that <laughs> new job title i acquired 100 days ago and still have i think just recognizing i think certainly as a team leader and a leader of people and having kind of people at the heart of what we want to do just being very very aware of all these different things which when they're in the office you absolutely never think about of course they're still juggling life behind the scenes but it's never really been there and suddenly that whole thing became melded and I personally think if we can maintain that going forward in terms of how we've managed that that will be a really beneficial well-being aspect to our new environment but we are still very much learning about how we incorporate that life intrusion into the work and we make that a sort of really fine balance so I've, I've found that fascinating as a as a team leader um, no, that, that, can that, I just, that, yes keep going so i was just going to chip in there and just say it's been reflected in the research that we've done with our colleagues while colleagues feel that we're helping them and supporting them with their their well-being really well and our scores have improved on that level we also know that people are feeling more stressed because of the, the change and the uncertainty because of these extra worries and responsibilities they've got at home. So it's about kind of finding out how we can, can support them in those areas and, you know, this kind of fast changing landscape and as we evolve going forward. Yeah, it's amazing, Kate, and, and a great point. The parallels, you know, for colleagues, par parallels for clients and, and communities um, are, are key and consistent I think so moving moving us on to the second section um just staying on the kind of topic of insights Nick and just we, we kind of we did hum and haw about showing this because we we did ask a number of questions around well how have we been doing during the period and um we just want to be transparent and show you these are the things that you told us in terms of um how have you felt over the last few months in regard to the, the relationship with Aaron Mitchell um, so Nick, do you want to just talk us through the next two slides? Of course, yeah, and uh, well, overwhelmingly in uh, positive here. You know, it, when we ask the question, uh, you know, what two words would you describe how Irwin Mitchell has made you feel during this period? Um, and you know, we can see that communication is a is a massive, you know. Uh, 
part of, of everything here and uh, and the fact that we've had to you know, just transform our lives digitally um but it, it shows the way that Irwin Mitchell have actually done this to to deliver the service that you've continued so keeping people informed I know people have been really welcoming of the, the webinars such as this uh but all the different communication that you you've been delivering so this support valued and, and through this increased communication you can see people therefore saying well they did feel involved or, or they're not alone um, and, and they are thankful for, for the advice that we, we've been able to give them. There were some slight differences. So, you know, for example, business uh, clients were, were more likely to talk of confidence and, and reassured, uh, whereas on the, the personal side of things, people were more likely to, to talk about being involved. And, uh, and actually from the, you know, I know we've got different groups on today, so the community groups and charities, they were more likely to talk of feeling supported. So lots and lots of, uh, of really good, uh, good, good feedback there in terms of how we've enabled to continue to do business and, and help people along the way. Great. And, and if you move on to the next slide as well, and Pauline, just to bring, bring you in there, because I know we were talking about this ahead of yesterday around the balance between the strong numbers here and um, self-congratulations versus actually being pretty proud of the job that we're trying to do. Yeah, I think that's I think that's right. So we're obviously really pleased to see that these results are so strong. Um, but I think none of us are resting on our laurels because everything is changing so rapidly and 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 actually in 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 quite big detail as well. That it's important for us to continue to keep asking for feedback and then responding for that feedback. So whilst client feedback has always been important to us. I think it's never been more important than right now, actually, for us yeah. as a business, but for all businesses, actually, as they start to think about how they manage, how their clients are feeling and and, and responding to that. So we are really pleased that we that, you know, our clients and people think that we have done a good job through the last the last few months. But we um, we know we've still got things to do. Brilliant. And, and if you we're going to go to Slido again, so thank you so much for the thank engagement. You. Just, yes, before, just, just before we go there, all I was going to say is, you know, obviously really lovely feedback. And um, I wonder whether, you know, this is just such an equaliser, isn't it? We are all going through this. So there's very, very rarely a time as a professional advisor, supporter, that you are living in the moment with the client with the same challenges that they have. But they may well have their legal challenges as well, but they've almost become secondary. It's how do I get through this? How do I survive this? we're all having exactly parallel thoughts and experiences all the way through so I, I think we're learning together and learning together has always been one of my philosophies in advice anyway because I think you need to really learn about the clients business in my area or in that, about their life and what they're trying to achieve this has been really working <laughs> together and I think honestly that that's brought from the relationship sometimes I've had conversations I just don't know I'm going to need to go away and have a think about that because this is just unique so I think that's been a really different for me in the way in which we've interacted with clients, which I've enjoyed and hopefully the clients have enjoyed as well. Brilliant. I, I, it's incredible, isn't it? So if we flick to just see what, what people are saying on slide on it again, just to encourage encourage everybody out there to, to tell us this is really around picking up on what you're saying, Vicky, around what, what have you enjoyed about the way that we've worked together during this? And again, we're taking these as, you know, as insights into helping us know what we're going to do as we go beyond this situation. That sense so, of community one is huge, isn't it? I mean, regular yeah. communication is zooming up there and I think people have wanted to stay in touch and it's great that we, we've been doing that. But that sense of community for me has been really apparent in life. You know, when you've gone out, people are just kinder and want to help and are far more willing to chat and have conversations at the social distance. Um, yeah. Fascinating to see. Just to pick up on that, I was. Oh, sorry. Go on, sorry. I was just going to say what surprised me in the word cloud was the absence of the word resilient. I think 
COVID presented us with challenges as individuals, as communities, as businesses, and it's been fascinating watching um, Erwin Mitchell and other responsible business come together and have a real clear focus in terms of protecting their workforce, but equally what Vicky said, protecting the communities around them. And I think it's good to see that actually lots of businesses don't lose productivity through the last hundred days, and it'll be interesting to see what the results and figures and data looks like moving forward. But I think the real valuable lesson in all of this, and I hope that we don't lose sight of this post-COVID, is that change of culture within organisations, particularly in responsible businesses, about caring for not only their workforce, but also the communities around them. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic point. And just finally on this one, so Pauline, you've seen now of the 30 or so responses in that work cloud. Do you, what sense do you make out of that? Yeah, so I think Vicky makes a, a, a great point around the, the care and support for each other that we've all felt actually in the community. But probably the other thing that comes out here is around digitisation. And you can see quite a few comments about here around paperless, making things more simple, um, being able to, um, where was that, where was I looking, working digitally and also offering digital training to all. And I think what we have seen over the last few months is that people who potentially haven't enjoyed being serviced in a digital way have responded to it really well. And I think as a as a country, we've digitised, you know, in 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 a matter of months and our businesses have had to digitise. And and, and certainly from a Owen Mitchell perspective, we've we've really felt the need to digitise our processes, change the way we've worked and do that at pace. And um, and it's great to see that some of the things coming out here are about actually, you know, that that's good for that's good for our clients as well. So I think digitization is the way forward. Yeah, and Pauline on paperless, I think um, a, a couple of things. I think I don't think I'm betraying any trade secret, and I'm sure there'll be other people around on this event that smile at this. But we had lawyers that could never live without paper. We were told <laughs> that consistently. Um, but they have and they've survived and they've learned a lot. I think the other thing just as a cautionary and well, I've got two points actually. Cautionary point is recognising that stress, that anxiety. There are people who have found that transition difficult. So providing the support both to clients and to our colleagues and to our charity partners about having that digital experience has also been. So again, we've learned together through that. And people have absolutely come on board really fast, but just always having that slight consciousness that there are some people that just never will get this, never want to get this, don't want to. My mum can't be bothered with any of this. So I think, you know, having that and, and the th third thing I was going to say, Kate, I'm sure from an environmental and community point of view, seeing that paperless message go up is one of it really helps support some of your messaging <laughs> you've been trying to drive through for a long time to us all. I think that sorry just start adding into that as well the other thing is it's about recognizing that not everybody has that access or ability to to have that digital experience so us as a responsible business making sure that we're able to include everyone and bring every long everyone along with um, with us especially in our communities and I think I, I think thinking about all of that and putting all of that together um, when you when you look at you know some of the new ways of working that us as a business and other businesses have have adapted and and adopted different ways of working, um, what's going to be important now is that we don't lose that pace and that ambition to really drive that forward, but yeah. also that we don't lose the caring element, which comes right back to what you were saying earlier at the start, Vicky. I think it's worked so well with our clients and in other businesses as well because the care has been there with the digitization of the processes i think if we lose that care element we just have we just have automatic processes and i think that would be not a good thing for us or actually for for many businesses so um yeah for me it's a real journey for how we keep digitization and care with our clients really strong at the for at the forefront and I think just, just driving our smart working programme, so I'm sponsoring the smart working programme across the firm on behalf of the board and the programme's looking at, was looking at pre-COVID actually, the digital experience um, and how we actually make our workforce agile and remote and make the client experience through digital even better. So COVID came and quite frankly, it's been a massive accelerant to that project, which has been amazing, absolutely brilliant. But we've, we've, we've battled with that throughout, that you can't just give people kit and technology and training and go, there you go, now we're in a new world. That cultural piece, and as Kate says, 
really close to my own heart. My youngest son has Down syndrome. He can't just simply access this. This isn't just something he can do. He's learned it blooming fast, I have to say. It's all over teams. But as employers and responsible employers and as people in the community, we really need to recognise that diverse group and make sure we've got half an ear to the world and making sure we are keep helping them keep up. Um, and I think that that's part of our DNA at, at the firm, but I think just being conscious of that with clients, because I think that's what clients are trying to achieve as well, and that's a really, really difficult balance to support in clients, because that's really important, I think. Yeah, I think just, to, just to build on that, Vicky, you know, that 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 sense of the community. Uh, again, I'm, I'm falling back on some of the, some additional research that we've done separate to this, uh, where we spoke to these 2000 business decision makers. Um, but 62 percent of them were saying that, they're, you know, the, the changes that they're anticipating to make for their business is that they'll take a much more active role in community projects and, and social initiatives. Um, you know, so it's it's the wider business decision makers and that's SMEs, mid market and corporates that are saying that. So I think it's, it's just really great in terms of some of the positives that we've been able to take out of this awful COVID situation. Which and I would us... echo, I was just to add to um, Nick's comment, I would add to that. So business in the community in response to COVID set up the National Business Response Network, which is basically a portal which enables community groups, local charities to log any desperate needs that they have. And then we use our members to really try and satisfy those needs very locally in the community at the time that they need it. And over the course of the last hundred days, we've made hundreds and thousands of matches of food of technology, of toiletries, um, PPE, and that's all been down to the business community really stepping up when needed. Fantastic, fantastic. So I need to move us on if that's okay, and if we can flick back to the, the presentation, James. And, and Nick, can you just briefly take us through, because this section we're moving on to is, is, is an interesting one around change. And we did poll um, prior to the event around um, how people were feeling around whether things felt different or not. Nick, do you want to take us through the next? I think it's the next slide, James. I think it's uh, yeah. This go. this is the slide. Um, well, we asked you all out there uh, again pre-event how satisfied you were with Erwin Mitchell, and you know we've already seen some some very positive uh, feedback already in terms of how we've been able to communicate. And I, I think in terms of satisfaction scores, it's a it's a very high satisfaction score that we we see there on the the left hand side, uh, with over or well, nearly sixty percent of uh, you saying a nine or ten. When we ask the question, you know, have you seen a change in service? So we know you're satisfied and we know that we've been, uh, you know, readily speaking to you uh, through different means digitally. Um, have you seen a change in service? 58% saying no change in the service provided over the past three months. Um, some of you might think, you know, well, is this good or bad? Well, actually, I see it as a, that's a, a really amazing statistic there because as we've all been talking today, you know, we, we've really had to pivot and change the way that we do business. Uh, and for 60 percent of you to, to say, you know, there's no change, it's business as usual, being able to still deliver the, the great business uh, advice and uh, that we've always done is uh, I think is a telling point there. We did, of course, some people you can see 42 uh, percent said that you you know, there had been a change and the majority of those had talked about more positive change, more communications. We've seen this with other clients of ours uh, where we track their satisfaction and loyalty towards them in their, their studies. And, and actually where we've been used to face to face contact before, which was the norm, when we've had to just, you know, revert to distance uh, through either through uh, through teleconferencing or phone calls, actually we're able to do much more communication, which means that we're closer, we're having more conversations and therefore that greater empathy towards, you know, uh, our clients uh, and customers out there. There were, I, I just for all that you cynics out there, there were three people that said uh, that it's, uh, they weren't satisfied and that was because they were having problems uh, because of the, you know people working from home uh, and so uh, not being able to, to contact or one person said that they weren't having as much contact uh, as usual. But the majority, it was a very glowing feedback in terms of you know how we're doing, we're, we're, we've transformed into this new world and we're doing even a better job than we were before. And Nick, on, on that, just one observation from, from Mick. Well, it's a question, actually, which I suspect you won't be able to answer, but 
it's one that's been going through my mind. It goes back to my sort of kindness and tolerance point. Um, I think I do think we've been more tolerant of each other. So we, again, living this experience together, actually the expectations of clients remain high. Our expectations of ourselves all remain high. But I think there's been forgiveness and we've been seen as human and we've seen clients as human beings, which is always our aim. But I think we have really been human beings first and advisors and having that relationship second. And I think bringing that tolerance into the relationship and the kindness on both sides, hopefully is part of the contributor to those, those scores, because they are, they're, they're amazing. But, you know, I'm hoping that that's a change we see forever, because that would be a brilliant world to work in. Maybe yeah. I'm just too optimistic. <laughs> no, I think it's great. And, and we're going to go to Slido next, Becky, and, and just to continue that chat, just if you can tee it up, um, James. Is the next two questions that we're going to ask you quite quite in rapid style is kind of looking ahead beyond where we are now and um, just let James and Lisa change the question if you go on to Slido. And this is something we're really interested around um, concerns in the future. So what are you worried about? So what have you missed about the way we used to work prior to lockdown is the kind of the the kind of way we've kind of posed this question. So what have you missed? What have you missed, Vicky? Um, I've missed seeing people um, face to face. I do see people's faces far more than I used to because I had to travel to 18 offices to see all my team, but I now can see them every day if I want to. But I think that physical seeing people is something as humans we, we crave. But actually, there's been a lot, lot, probably a lot more things I've enjoyed than that I've, than that I've missed. Um, so if I can bring a little bit of that personal contact back in eventually, um, I think I'll be quite happy with the new world. <laughs> so, there so you go, face to face contact. There you go. That's exactly me. That's exactly me. Yeah. Socialising with friends is also definitely me, although I'm not going to run to the pub on Saturday. I'm still a bit nervous about going to the pub. And things like, things like Microsoft Teams, like what we're doing here, have enabled us to all feel closer to each other, which is, has been amazing. I mean, I bet many people on the call and, and, and us as panels have been involved in family Zoom calls and pub quizzes and you see your family in a different way. But I think I think you're right, Vicky, there's something about the social element and particularly the working element of maybe that bit of banter in the corridor or or a, or a you know, a quick coffee with someone who you can who you can pull aside because you think they're having a rough day. I think that's um, that's that's one of the things that I've missed from 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 the last few months, being able to really have that social interaction. Yeah. yeah. You can see it loud and clear on that. And we're now going to go on to the next question, Lisa, if you can just post that one up. And I guess this is really trying to get at the concern element. So what are you most worried about when coming out of lockdown? And, and again, Vimy, what are you, what's your thoughts in this space? I was going to say that's probably not the best question to ask somebody that's living in Leicester. My biggest concerns were that actually we would see a rise in um, transmission again. And evidently that's what's playing out in my hometown. Um, in terms of some of the business community that I work with, I think one of the big concerns for them is how do you manage the well-being of your workforce when they come back to work and we no longer have lockdown, particularly around financial well-being and the longer term mental health impact, particularly if you've um, lost people through this process. Yeah, of course, it's the, the tragedy which we can never forget actually around the whole this situation. And and just flipping back to Vicky, any any thoughts about your concerns as you as you unlock? I know you yeah. want to retain a bit, but what are you worried about? <sighs> Me, what am I worried about? Um, I think the one that I was picking up on there was mm -hmm. a missed opportunity to change for better, and I recognise it's quite a small one, so perhaps not felt felt by the majority. Absolutely share the concerns on second wave. I'm not dismissing that. I think that that was covered there by Vimy, but. I think the, um, for me, certainly, as I say, re running the firm's digitisation programme, 
we've we've made so much progress and we've found so many benefits in this new world. I think the flexibility of how we're working, how that fits into our family life, um, helps us have that sort of social interaction with the kids a bit more, maybe with family members a bit more and fitting that around work. And I know that's brought some stresses and strains as well. But I think some of those real benefits that we've got I'm really nervous that it will be really easy and you hear people say when we go back to work well we've never stopped work <laughs> so the way we've been trying to phrase it in our group of looking forward has been you know why would we go back for what reasons are we going back so let's accept that we're all here 3,000 of us at Owen Mitchell are working remotely we're doing that relatively successful that's what the, the data is telling us although there are bits we miss um, so for what reasons would we go back? I think we'll go back to collaborate. I think we'll go back to work with clients to see them, to get that physical interaction, to read their emotional and behavioural um, prompts and cues. Um, I think we'll go back to collaborate with colleagues because we work online about solutions, but actually face to face sometimes that really works. I saw someone put quiet time. I'll definitely go back occasionally for a quiet day without the kids running around. Um, but I think, you know, that for me is don't let's not lose the momentum we've gained which is whilst being distressing stressful and hard there's been some enormous positives so for me it's how do we pull those positives out for the clients for us for the community and really really embrace those and make them sick yeah I'm not, fe- I'm not worried about it but I am I'd be I'd be I'd be sad if we lost it yeah, and I think I think you can see that that being echoed in in, in the work yeah. cloud there. I mean, well, yeah, it's really interesting around maintaining the good lessons. I think is whoever put that. I think probably summarises that point really we've really done, strong. We've done we've done the survey, haven't we? I just see losing remote working benefits there. We've mm-hmm. done the survey of our staff, and over eight percent of our staff want to pay some form of working from home. Um, so they're not saying necessarily I never want to go back, but they are all saying make this part of my new life. And presenteeism was on there as it was on the, uh, you know, we don't ever want to go back to a culture of presenteeism, I think. But being visible to clients in whatever way they need is going to be important and being visible to colleagues in whatever way they need is going to be important. But I think we're all accepting that digital is a really legitimate way of getting in touch. What, what was that stat, Vicky? Was that 80%? It's just over 80% in our latest pool survey, wasn't it? Wow. wow. Yeah, I, it's Kate, I, I thought, I, I think I see saw um, some recent statistics as well um, in the newspapers saying 13%, um, only 13% of UK working adults want it to go back to how it was before. Wow. Pretty, pretty strong indicators i think that there's definitely going to be that new normal that you hear so many people talking about but with caution i think is the probably the, the takeaway from from that feedback so thank you I think, well so i think much. david the other point i just wanted to pick up sorry if i may just on the mm-hmm. I, I can see a comment there which my my toolbars just covered up but it was effectively about being in enclosed spaces with other people yeah again i think as working with with other people whether that's you know charity communities whether that's business communities whether that's just us in our family lives I think we all need to remember that people will be fearful of this um, and I'd include myself in that I think you know we've all got dependents and things like that and that fear is going to be really real and how we manage that as we are more in contact with each other I think will be really really important I think giving clients support through that and thinking through how they may face that challenge is going to be important but again it'll be learning together because you know, my advice will only be experiential, which is well, what am I seeing and what am I feeling? So I think that that will be a really, really important dialogue to get going quite quickly. Really, I, I, absolutely. And and if we can, if we can flip back and we just move into our last section for the last few minutes, we did did gain some further insight around that question um, pre this event, around when we asked the question, what do you want our Mitchell to continue doing? as we go towards hopefully unlocking uh, and Nick do you just quickly want to take us through effectively what are, what you our clients and community partners were telling us absolutely well I, I think you know it's come through loud and clear today and it you know it does on this slide too that the way that the job that 
yourself, Erwin Mitchell, have done and delivered to clients. Um, and I, I think just building on what we've seen on that slide, you know, we want to maintain these good lessons. We want to continue some of this good work. And, and that is all around communication. So even when we, you know, we are back in the office, some of us, and there is face to face, let's continue to, to keep these webinar programs going because they are valued so much. People are learning from them and, and taking so much away. And, and communication, you know, let's just keep it going. We cannot communicate too much. You know, there's lots of different uh, threads of communication, whether it's to the personal side or the business side. Um, so lots of people talked about, you know, useful roundtable events. Again, even if they're uh, in a virtual sense, being able to bring people together and learn from each other so that it's that advice imparting that people are really welcoming. Interesting. And on that point of that advice, um, final two questions that we just want to pose as we head towards the end of this event is what topics would you like to be discussed at the next session? So if you can go on slide on and give us some indication of that and whilst we're waiting for the, the topics to to appear, I guess front of mind from from our panel's point of view in terms of topics that you're picking up that you're feeling people are are, are very, very interested in. Well, I think David from a I think I think there's two things going on. I think there's legal compliance that people just want to make sure they're doing everything properly. So that's health and safety, furloughing, sadly redundancies. We're now starting to see directors' duties. People be worried about their responsibilities around a table, um, wills, um, estate planning, that sort of thing. That people are just getting a bit more prepared for maybe a you know an unfortunate event. So I think you know there's that legal advice, but I think there's also a lot of um, questions coming from from clients around building resilience, about cash flow management, about looking forward and what sorts of issues are coming over the horizon. So needing those, um, needing that kind of handhold through the uncertainty of future. And um, so, you know, huge amounts almost of just chatting through some of this stuff that's so uncertain, rather than it being specifically legal. I mean, of course. Hopefully we do that very well, but it's it's teaching us as well as a business. We're learning from from that. Um, and just I think well-being with colleagues is the other one that's come up quite a lot. So yeah. businesses yeah. are very concerned about their colleagues well-being and how you check and monitor that from a distance. There's some really big issues that are out there, um, both legal and non, I think. It's great. And, and, and Pauline, what, what would you take from the, the cloud as it's developing in front of us? Um, so I think there's there's some really good stuff on here and I think actually it's around thinking about some of the things that we can add value to the people who join these for the next time. Um, I'm just looking at some of the how do we keep people's well-being working at home. I'm personally really passionate about how do we keep fun and engagement in the home office actually. So whilst people are working remotely, what do our leaders now have to do? How do they, how does their leadership style have to change to mm. engage their people in a different way? They can't just walk past their desk anymore or or nip to that office and catch up. So I think I think personally we could take some of this insight and then start to think about what we're learning and the things that we're doing well that we could also inspire other people with and, and, and get involvement with. So I think really thinking about that home working thing, there's something here. So training contracts and, and COVID, I mean, that's the that's the big one that's come up. I'm not entirely sure what that what, what that covers, but there's loads of opportunities here for our expertise and the expertise that we have in you know the thousands of people who work for us that we could help people to um, consider and get engaged with. And, and I think we're all working through this together, aren't we? No one's got the answers. Everybody's learning as they go. Yeah. So the more that we can keep talking to each other and communicating what good looks like, I think the more everyone else can learn from it. Brilliant, brilliant. So I mean, thank you, uh, Vicky and Pauline. And just on that point about taking the insights and sharing. So as we just about to close another minute or so, we will be packaging up all of the insights that you've provided with us this morning, uh, as well as the pre um, event insights that we've been dis discussing and chatting about this morning into a package. And we will send that to everybody that joined our event this morning. So thank you very much for joining us. And finally, 
Uh, final slide question. So normally at the end of these events, you get a little survey that's you know, private and you tell us what you thought of the event. We're going to be quite brave this morning. We're actually going to ask you to do that live. So on a scale of one to 10, how useful have you found this session? So as we as we let this develop, it leaves me just to say thank you for attending uh, and also thank you to our amazing panel this morning. So thank you, Vicky, Kate, Jimmy, Pauline and Nick. Um, we'll let that slide all good. OK, so we've got a bit of a mixture of events. So and the, obviously what we'll do is we'll take this feedback and turn that into a review of this pilot and hopefully make the next one even better and more valuable for you. So thank you, everybody, and um, we'll see you next time.